Okay, I'm going to try to keep this really short, but I wanted to introduce margin of error. This is something we're going to talk about um, quite a bit more because it's really important for statistics. In fact, you know, most of the statistics studies or all of the statistical studies that I've seen include some kind of a margin of error. Okay, so the classic example is chip bags. I don't have a bag of chips because I wasn't thinking apparently, but you know, you buy a bag of chips at the store and it's always like, half full, and then you get a bunch of air, right? Yeah. That's because they're measured by weight. So what happens is you have this bag coming along on a conveyor belt that's empty. The machine comes over, drops chips down into it, and it's sitting on a little sensor. As soon as it hits the right weight, it moves on. But they're not all the same, right? Because chips break. Some of them are different sizes. Maybe one gets a little extra cheese powder on it. So, um, all of the bags of the chips are not going to be the same, but if they put on there 24 ounces, people are expecting it to be 24 ounces, right? Or more. So we want to look at the margin of error. So for all of these things like chips, um, water bottles, all of hand sanitizer, see it's got its little eight fluid ounces. They're not exact. So they have to be within a certain range, like a little bit small amount to either side and that's the margin of error. So, okay. So I pretended that I weighed a bunch of chip bags. Ta-da, these are the weights that I pretend got. Okay, so I can calculate my margin of error. I can also calculate my average and all that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna go ahead and find the average. I'm gonna go equals average. I'm gonna try that again and maybe I'll actually type stuff. Average, <clears throat> I'm going to highlight my data, close parentheses. Okay, so my average weight on this was 24. I'm going to put that up here. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to know the lowest value in the data that I got, and I want the highest. The easiest way to do that is to sort these. So I'm going to highlight them. I'm going to go up to format. I am going to, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm going to go to, data, sort range. I want to, it doesn't have a header row. Sometimes like if I had this data, like the column label right here, then I would select that, but I don't have that. I'm gonna go A to Z basically from low to small, sort it, and there we go. So my lowest value is 20, so I gotta put that up here. My highest value is 28, so I put that right here. So now if I look at it, if I subtract 20 from 24, that minus that, that's a difference of four ounces. Same thing right here, if I subtract 24 from 28, so this minus this, that's also four ounces. So basically I have my average and then it goes four ounces over that and four ounces below that. So to, to give my average with my margin of error, I would say that my bag of chips is, or the average bag of chips is 24 plus or minus, so it says plus sign with a little minus under it, plus or minus four ounces. Now probably, um, I, haven't, I haven't weighed this to be sure, but my theory is that if you actually weigh the chips, probably they give the lower value and then everything is above that. So instead of having the average bag weigh 24, they might put 20 ounces. The average might actually be 24, but they don't want to like disappoint the customers, but that's just, that's my theory. I haven't tested it. But basically, you've got a margin of error. This is like the acceptable range for your, for your bag of chip weight. That was not grammatically correct. This is why I don't teach English. But you get what I'm saying. You have the average value, and then you have a certain amount to either side of that. This is found all over the place. It's not just with chips or with food or with hand sanitizer. But yeah, so that's margin of error.